All right, this is a web suspect, and I'm going to do a video linking together what caliber hitters and I've been talking about for the last couple months, and that's the um, Kosars or the Cossacks working out of uh, Camp Pendleton. And uh, there's a video here titled July 13th American Martial Law Foreign Troops Arrive. Now, We've all seen these videos before, and a lot of them are kind of like BS. And um, the guy over at The Wire called BS on this. I'll have to do more research on it. But you want to go to this video, and at 4.20, approximately, there is um, an ABC News clip of Russian troops training at Camp Pendleton. Now, this is very important, because what this does is this links the two COSARs that we've identified in the quote-unquote Patriot Movement or the Liberty Movement uh, Lieutenant Mark Trolldice and Adam Kochstash impressed with the display of international military might. Thousands of men and women from several different countries all landed on Camp Pendleton's beaches today. It's all part of a multinational exercise called Dawn Blitz. New at 5, 10 News Report. The international exercise called Dawn Blitz. Reporter Joe Little was on the beach during that exercise and reveals why training alongside other countries has become part of the U.S. military's way of life. Now, when you see these troops up close, what you want to do is look at their uniforms. And if they're not wearing Marsapat or ACUs, they're not U.S. forces. Okay, so we've identified the Chinook and the Humvees. Those are U.S., but these uniforms, just as I pointed out before, are not Marspat or ACU. So those are probably most likely Russian forces. Uh, and look, check out the rifles, not AR-15s. Oh, they look, they look like they're wearing U.S. badges. They're not carrying U.S. Molly backpacks. <laughs> So that video goes on, but that, that's the most important one because that links the two shills that we've identified at Camp Pendleton with this uh, foreign troop exercise at Camp Pendleton. That links it all together. So if you guys out there want to do more research, uh, to see if you could do some research on this. Also, I have a high priority alert with this. So we're going to try and flag it to maybe U.S. Park Service or, or the Secret Service. Uh, Marshals lose track of encrypted radios worth millions. Now, this is uh, Yankee White. Uh, we're going to make this a red, red alert because if these are the same two-way radios that the Secret Service use or the National Parks Police and other trunk systems in Maryland, D.C., and we have foreign troops here, we could have an operation where people could be listening on communications. We still have not found, as far as I know, these 2,000 encrypted two-way radios. Uh, somebody may want to contact the U.S. Marshal Service. You know, I'm not a federal agent, so that's not my job to call over there. But uh, there is a 1-800 number for the U.S. Marshals. I'll get it for you real quick if somebody else wants to call. Do not call from your home line, use Skype or payphone. That's under contacts. Your contact number for this is <clears throat> going to be under usmarshals.gov slash contacts I'm not sure I see a 1-800 number listed here I might 
a tactical operations, 1-800-336-012. Uh, that's a high priority red flag 